Kaiser Fraser dealer. The man who brings you America's outstanding cars, the beautiful Kaiser, and the thrifty new Henry J. present The Adventures of Ellery Queen. <laughs> This is Rex Marshall welcoming you on behalf of the nearly 3,000 Kaiser Fraser dealers from coast to coast. You know, friends, it is a fact that the Henry J is America's number one buy. It's number one for economy, and I'm here to tell you that it's number one for ruggedness, too. Now, as an example of that ruggedness, I'd like you to take a look at these two pieces of body steel right here. You'll notice that they're both the same heavy gauge of steel. Well, sir, this piece here is from the Henry J. Now, just take a look at this one over here. Same heavy gauge of steel, and yet it comes from the body of a car costing $1,000 more. So, you see, that illustrates how the Henry J is built to the same rugged standards as the most expensive cars. And that's why you'll enjoy years and years of dependable, trouble-free driving. Why, that Henry J is designed and engineered to stand up under the roughest punishment. Even this concrete pretzel bender can't twist the body or throw it out of line. The Henry J's doors fit smoothly. Not a bolt out of line, not a joint out of kilter. Yes, sir, it's been proven on the testing grounds, proven on the road. The Henry J is America's number one buy. And incidentally, I want to point out to you that uh, with just an average trade-in, you can own the Henry J for as little as $34 a month. And what's more, you can drive it for only a penny a mile for gasoline. So don't wait, will you? Pay a visit to your Kaiser Fraser dealer tomorrow and drive the amazing Henry J. for yourself. And now for tonight's Adventure of Ellery Queen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps you recognize the Brahms Piano Concerto. And you, uh, you may be interested in knowing that it once caused a murder. It all began at a birthday party given by the conductor, Anton Roussel, for his wife. His uh, attractive protege was playing when we arrived. Bravo. Good evening, Tony. Well, Doctor, we thought you weren't coming. Boy, I'm late. I hope you don't mind, Tony. I've got a friend with me. Fine. This is Ellery Queen, Anton Roussel, How do you do, Mr. and Mrs. Roussel. How do you do, Mr. Roussel? Happy birthday, my dear. Well, it was nice of you to come. May I... Uh... Introduce uh, Miss Grove and Mr. Fairchild. Fairchild, I'm sorry we missed your playing, Miss Grove. Thank you. Won't you help yourself to a drink, Miss Queen? Oh, thank you. May I? Yes, indeed. How did you like it, Henry? Miss Grove plays very well. Well, we were to do the Brahms next week. But since Sir Witch is ill, I want you to let Anita play it. It'll be her debut. Henry is a businessman. Why don't you ask me what I... Oh, yes, Mrs. Roussel, was I all right? I hope you'll forgive me, my dear, but you're not ready to appear in concert. Well, that's not quite true, Martha. But I can play so much better than I did just now. We'll let Henry cast the deciding vote. Henry will vote the way you tell him to. You've already made up your mind to let her play. Now, Martha. Why not be honest, Anton? You only gave this party for me to get your protege in audition with him. As if a board chairman could pick a soloist. Martha, don't excite yourself. You know about your heart. Oh, she's not ready and you know it. Do you think anyone believes that it's her talent you care about? Martha. Hardy has tired her out, Tony. She needs rest. Rest? How can I rest when I know what's going on behind my back? Let me take you to your room, Martha. I'm awfully sorry. She's, she's just not well. I do hope you'll forgive her. Please, you mustn't blame her. She's in constant pain. It isn't her fault. I understand. Now, if you'll excuse me. 
Don't be upset, Miss Grove. It's not me. I don't care what happens to me. It's what she does to him. To who? Her husband. Mr. Queen, promise you won't let him know I told you. She wouldn't even let me tell the doctor, but I've got to talk to somebody. Well, what is it? She's not saying. Someday she's going to kill him. Well, aren't you being a little melodramatic? You haven't seen her. The jealous rages. Last week she threw this at him. Might have killed him. Yeah, very easily. I know it's not her fault. Ten years of constant pain could unhinge his mind, but now it's a question of his safety. Well, Mr. Queen has got to help. Well, what can I do? I heard your father's with the police. Can't they have her committed? Well, not without her husband's consent. He never admit to them she was violent. I suppose the next time it's worse. I tell you his life is in oh, don't, don't cry, Miss Grove. I, as I said before, I, I don't think I can help. But at least you try. Oh, I feel so much better about it. Will you, uh, will you tell Dr. Fleming I didn't wait? Good night, Mr. Grove. This is my first vacation in five years, Martha. So behave yourself till I get back. Here's my address on the Cape, Tony, if you need me. I'll be back in ten days. Fine, thank you. Have a nice time. I will. Goodbye. Bye. There you are, my dear. Feed me sedatives to keep me quiet. <laughs> Next time I'll beat you. I suppose I should be used to your bringing good-looking girls here. Secretaries and nurses. This one's different, Anton. She frightens me. What do you mean? She has no heart. You can hear it in her music. She'll claw her way to the top just the same. She'll use you and a hundred men after you to get there. Well, my dear, if you feel that strongly about it, we'll cancel the concerto. I'll go and tell oh, her. No, no. Not just to Send her away for good, Anton. Get her out of our lives. All right. All right. How is she? Arthritis is horribly painful, Anita. We'll have to forgive her. We'll look so worn out, poor Tony. <laughs> poor everybody. We won't talk about it anymore. Tell me about Mr. Fairchild. Was he pleased? Oh, <laughs> you look like a frightened spaniel. Tell me, Anita, how old are you? Heifetz made his debut at ten. Heifetz was ready. Oh, you're not going to let me play. Oh, now, don't look so stricken. You have years of concerts ahead of you. It's all right. Now, darling. I'm sorry. Oh, Tony, don't look so unhappy. It makes me want to take your head in my arms and just... Anita... You mustn't come here again. I can't even see you. You mean I'll never see you? Martha has so little. Tell me. I see. Will you kiss me goodbye? I won't. I thought her on me. I have to go into her. Goodbye, my dear. going to fight tonight with that cold. It's not a regular cold. It's, it's just a tickle. Just what? You wouldn't think I looked after my own cold while he was in rompers now, would you, Miss Grove? I know how he feels. I know what it means to worry about someone you love. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry I can't help you about Mrs. Rotel. As I told Ellery, there's nothing the police can do. I wasn't going to show you this. Just promise me you won't tell Mr. Rotel. He doesn't know about it. What is it? An antique dagger. Used to hang on their living room wall. The other night after you left, I, I went in to say goodnight to Mrs. Roussel. She was asleep. I saw that sticking out from under a pillow. Mm, bad business. You better leave it here, Miss uh, Grove. 
When Dr. Fleming returns, I'll warn him to keep things like this away from her. You mean you still can't do anything about it? No, I can't. But do come and visit us again. We're always happy to see you, pretty girl. <laughs> I won't be here. I'm going back home tonight to Chicago. Oh, what about your music? I have to get away. If she killed him on my account, I... Well, I, I think you are needlessly alarmed, Miss Grove. And uh, good luck on your trip home. I'm going over now to say goodbye to him. Please promise you won't let him know I was here. And thank you both for, for seeing me. Good night. It was a pleasure. Okay, now take your choice. Either you're going to go into bed peaceably, or so help me, I'll carry you in. But it's not a regular cold, it's just a tickle. When she let me in. She'll be right back. My husband's not here. He's rehearsing. I know. I came to say goodbye to you. I'm going home tonight. Back to Chicago? Yes. I want to thank you for telling me the truth. I'm not good enough for the concert stage. I'm sorry I was so cruel, but I can't lie about music. Well, I'd rather be hurt a little now than spend the rest of my life finding out I couldn't make the grade. You're being very sensitive. Would you say... Goodbye to him. Anything the matter? I feel a bit lightheaded. Sit down a moment. I wonder if I might have some brandy. Why, of course. Uh, over there in the bar. Thank you. You see where it is? Yes, thank you. Giving up my work has been a bit of a blow to me. I know what you feel. I'm sure you do. Let's drink to whoever does play that spectacular next week. And to your trip, my dear. <laughs> I feel all right now. I won't keep you. Oh, what's the celebration? Hello, dear. Hello, my You're dear. You're early. How are you? Uh, Miss Grove stopped in to say goodbye. She's going back to Chicago tonight. Oh, we'll miss her. My husband knows that sick people get nervous and sometimes twisted inside. I'm sorry about the other evening. Please, I understand. I, I feel a little tired. I think I'll go and rest. Oh, no, please don't, Father Anton. I know you'll want to say goodbye to Miss Grove. You're really going? There's nothing to stay for. Without you? Anita, you're young. You'll forget it. Do you know what I'll be doing next week on the night we thought I'd be playing the Browns with you? No, what? Playing it. The same theme I played at the audition. The day I met you. as red as a lobster. He'd stay in the house the rest of the week, you understand? I was gone ten minutes and came back and found a note saying he'd gone to the fight. What brought you back to town four days early? Mrs. Roussel, she only wired me when she died. Oh, yes, we read about it this morning. What was it? Her I wonder, but it sometimes happens with that type of arthritis. Just when you're on the verge of a cure, the heart gives out. On the verge of a cure? Mm. But it, uh, it had already affected her mind. Right. What gave you that idea? Mine was as good as yours. Arthritis attacks the joint, not the brain cells. 
I told you she was dramatizing that situation, Dad. Who? Miss Grove. Roussel's protege. She came to us and said that Mrs. Roussel was insane. Said that she, she once threw a paperweight at her husband. Martha? She couldn't throw a feather. For the past three years, she hasn't been able to lift her arm above the elbow. What? Doc, are you sure it was her heart? Yes. She did have a heart condition. Do you uh, recognize this? Looks like Tony Roussel's Italian dagger. Yeah, it is. Do you, uh, you remember where he kept it? On the wall in the living room. Why? Well, Mrs. Roussel uh, took it down and had it under her pillow. Are you crazy? Oh, that's what I thought. You mean she couldn't have. A dagger high up on a wall? Ridiculous. Well, Miss Grove said she found it under Mrs. Roussel's pillow. Said that she meant to kill her husband. She even talked to us about having the woman committed. This girl sounds like a psychotic. What about poisons which could give the appearance of heart failure? Yes, sir. There are a couple. And I suggest, Doctor, you perform an autopsy. Perhaps I'd better. I'll check with you later. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Good night. So long, Doc. You know, it's hard to believe, Ellery. She looks so sweet and pleasant. So did Lucretia Borgia. Can't say, Tony. I've got to break clean. Just give it up. You mean your music? Yes. Your wife is right. I have no talent. That's not true. I wanted you to play it. Yet you can't do it just the same. Don't lie to me, Tony. I'll prove to you I'm not lying. You play the Brahms next week. No, you don't mean that. Next week it's official. Oh, Tony. My dear, you have lots of work to do between now and then. Oh, I will, darling. Uh, excuse me. The uh, maid told me to come in. How do you do, Mr. Queen? Mr. Rousseau, I, I'm awfully sorry to hear about your wife. And I'm afraid I have some upsetting news. What is it? Do you know if your wife had anything to eat or drink just before she died? Well, I don't think so. I had just come in. Yes. Oh, she and Anita were having a drink together. Oh, yes, I... I remember. I felt a bit lightheaded. She gave me some brandy. She wanted to drink with me to my trip. Yes. Why do you ask? The uh, brandy was poisoned. What? Dr. Fleming performed an autopsy. Your wife died from an overdose of morphine. No. You mean she killed herself? Oh, no. Oh, I could have stopped her. I know I could if she'd given any signs. Dr. Fleming was sure he could cure her. She wouldn't believe him. I should have made her believe it. Oh, darling, don't blame yourself. It was my fault. No, no, my dear. Your wife was a very strong-minded woman, Mr. Roussel. She wasn't the kind who commits suicide, was she? I believe I've been afraid of this for years. Mr. Queen, would you mind leaving us now? Oh, darling, you won't be alone. I'll never leave you now. Hi, Rex Marshall again. You know, I think I'd kind of rather be alone than spend any time with that Anita. Nice young lady to avoid. But right now, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of young ladies I know you'd like to meet. Doesn't that make a pretty picture, though? Only trouble is, there's something missing from that picture. Say, I know what it is. It's me. Excuse me, John. I invited these two beautiful young ladies down here this evening to help me show you something special about the beautiful Kaiser. Namely, its roominess. Now, this is what they call the lounge comfort seat. Nice, isn't it? You see, there's plenty of room to spare because the seat is over five feet wide and it extends across the entire interior width of the car. Now, what's more, this rear seat is curved so the three big people like myself enjoy... More hip room, more shoulder room. Yes, the big, beautiful Kaiser is designed to give you a more comfortable, relaxing ride hour after hour. Yes, it lets you take even long trips without feeling cramped up and worn out. So you see, the Kaiser gives you extra roominess all around. And you know that extra roominess means extra value for your car dollar. Say, speaking of extra value, I want to remind you that even though the prices of 14 other makes of automobiles have already been raised, so far, Kaiser Fraser has not yet raised its prices. So don't wait, will you? Visit your Kaiser Fraser dealer tomorrow for sure. And now, back to Ellery Queen.
I'm waiting for Mr. Russell. I uh, read in the papers that you're making your debut this evening. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I've been trying to work out a problem. Maybe, uh, maybe you can help me. I'd love to. It's about that brandy that you and Mrs. Russell drank the day she died. You said she got it for you. She gave it to me, yes. Uh, did she go to the bar and get it? Oh, I see what you mean. She couldn't have, could she? Yes, you see, it seems Mrs. Roussel didn't kill herself. She couldn't have. You mean she was... Murdered. Oh, but who would do such a thing? Well, who was in the room with her? Who got the brandy? I don't know. There wasn't anyone here except the three of us. The three of you? It's to Mrs. Roussel and me. But Mr. Roussel said that you and his wife were drinking when he came in. What are you trying to say? It's not true. I, I won't listen what to you. What isn't true, Miss Grove? Why, he loved her. He couldn't do such a thing. Well, now, wait a minute. She was his wife. No matter how sick she was or how much she was in love with me, he couldn't have done it. Are you trying to say Roussel killed her? No. Nobody killed her. She committed suicide. She put the poison in her own drink after it was handed to her, and you can't prove she didn't. I don't be too sure of that, Miss Grove. Mr. Queen, I have a concert to give in an hour. Would you tell me, please, why I was called here and where all this conversation is leading? Yes, leading to the fact that your wife didn't kill herself. She was murdered. Murdered. Who would want to kill my wife? How dare you say such a thing? If she didn't pour that brandy, she couldn't have. I don't care who poured it. I wasn't even in the room. Well, Miss Grove said you were. She even suggested that you handed your wife that glass. Well, I don't believe it. She couldn't have said that. Well, you'll see her in a little while at the concert. Ask her. I certainly intend to. Excuse me. Well, looks as if your plan is working some. Well, I think Roussel will deliver. The only way we can handle this is by profession. Oh, Dad, did you, uh, you call Sergeant Doyle? Yes, his men are over there now, setting up the equipment. Good. You know you're doing a dangerous thing, Ellery. You're playing with people's lives. Dad, there may be another murder. I'm trying to save a life before it's too late. Better hurry, Miss Grove. We open the house in a few minutes. I'll be through testing in a moment. Oh, Mr. Child. I wanted to see you. I want to thank you. You don't know what this chance means to me. Oh, not at all, my dear. Uh, have you seen Tony? No, I went to his dressing room to put my wrap there, but he hadn't come in yet. Well, if you see him, tell him Ellery Queen is waiting in his dressing room. Ellery Queen in his dressing room? Will you excuse me? Oh, thank you again for my chance. Think you want to do that? My hands are like ice. I've never been too nervous. Anita, the day my wife died, did you pour the brandy for her? I, I don't know. It was such an awful day. Everything's all mixed up in my mind. I saw Mr. Queen earlier today. Why did you tell him that I was there? That you that I poured it? Well, Answer me. I don't remember who was there. What difference does it make? They claim my wife could not have killed herself. She was murdered. Are you accusing me, Tony? I have to know the truth. Yes, Tony. I killed her for our sake, yours and mine. You know what you're saying? I freed her from pain and set us free to. We have a whole life together. No. Oh, but we have. They can't prove anything. If we both tell them it was suicide, they'll have to drop the whole thing. And you're mad. You need a doctor, Anita. You're sick. Terribly sick. What is it? We're late, Mr. Russell. All right, just a minute, please. No use, Anita. I'm going to the police. It means the end of my life, you know that. Can't you let me have this one half hour out there? So that's all that matters. That's all that ever matters. All right, go ahead, play. And just at the moment of your applause, you lose the one thing you love most. 
The show on stage, please. The show on stage, please. Announce a change of program. They say they're waiting for you, Mr. Roussel. Tell them I'm ill. Tell them anything. Well, there are 2,000 people out there, Mr. Roussel, who've come to hear your orchestra. Very well. He's coming out of it. Where am I? Oh, doctor. I've been poisoned. Martin, Rick Ryan. Tony did it. He killed his wife, and I found out. He, he poisoned me to keep me from telling. And brought the morphine here in your handbag? What? You haven't been poisoned. You collapsed in fright and shock. I came in here and substituted a harmless powder for the morphine. Oh, you, you can't prove anything. I, I, I swear Tony killed his wife. Any jury will believe me. Not when they hear your recorded confession. Oh. Come on now. You're a sick girl. Nobody's going to hurt you. Come on. I can't leave now. It's my debut. I'm playing the Brown. I'm sorry, my dear, but your debut is over. Come on. Boy, that was quite a wind-up, wasn't it? You know, friends, when you buy a car, naturally you want one that's been proven in actual use. So I know that you'll be interested in learning that over 600,000 Kaiser Fraser built cars are in use on the road today. And what's more, they've made the equivalent of more than 7 million trips across the United States. So that's pretty good proof, isn't it? Well, you be sure and pay a visit to your Kaiser Fraser dealer tomorrow, and then I know you'll agree with me when I say you can count on Kaiser Fraser for that. Good night. Have you ever cleaned a 210-piece silver service? This is the Dumont Television Network. <laughs>